So for today's project I'm going to do this rather windy looking uh, painting with this lady losing control of her umbrella trying to walk her dog. I can certainly relate to that. So what I've done is I've got the drawing done and I've also put a little bit of masking fluid on. Um, I've masked things like um, the handle of the umbrella, the dog lead, uh, the edges of the dog's ears, anywhere that I think may be difficult to uh, maintain the white when I'm putting a big sloppy wet and wet wash on. Um, so any areas that you want to protect. I don't like to put lots of masking fluid onto big areas because when you come to take it off it can sometimes take your paper as well. So just use it as and where you need to. I've also added some masking fluid in little specks just by tapping a little bit on to produce some rain and maybe idea a bit of leaf and also some little swooshes like that um, to give some direction for the wind. Um, I'm going to um, use a toothbrush to spat it. Now when I spat it I want to spat it in the direction that I want to create movement so I'm going to want to spat it across that way so that the movement is pushing against the umbrella. So it's important when you spat it with a toothbrush that you actually hold your brush and then spat it in the direction. So I'm pulling from the front to the back that way and if you don't want to use your finger you could use a brush and just spray on that way and when we do that the spray goes that way if you do it the other way that way you'll find that you get the spray and not your picture but direction is quite important and I thought I'd put that in now because once we go wet into wet it all happens very quickly so I've got a couple of brushes a wash brush a round brush I have some salt which I'm going to sprinkle um, I've got my water, I've got my cloth, I've got a little bit of tissue just in case I need to blot off any excess water running around on the picture and uh, I've got my colours prepared and I just want a nice light background colour so something like a raw sienna or a yellow ochre something that's light and airy and then some autumn colours, some autumn greens, burnt siennas um, a little bit of crimson, uh, some browns, just thinking about the colours of the leaf that might be blowing around in this windy weather. So I've got a, a few colours ready to go because once again once you start with your wet and wet you need to be ready and prepared because it all happens fairly quickly. Right so I'm going to start first of all and just wash my paper with some clean water where I want my background colour to go. So I'm just painting around my subject, filling in the background. I can go over any masked areas, but then painting carefully around anywhere that's not masked. You notice I start kind of low down because I start under here and work up over I find the water drains down into my wet surface whereas if I just start right at the top it often runs down um, and you get free running going on rather than the controlled um, shapes. So just cutting in here with my flat brush making sure the outline stays fairly clear. Is the dog you heard in the background. I might have to throw them out if they start getting too noisy. It's getting near to their walk time so they start getting a bit restless. They always wait until I switch the camera on before they start making a noise. Lie nice and quietly all morning and then Just working around like that. I 
that's fairly good. Nice and wet, nice and evenly wet. Make sure it's loaded your paper, loaded with water. It's not flooded, but it's loaded well. Give you plenty of working time. And then I'm going to go in with my background colour and I'm just going to throw this in very randomly. Spread it around a bit. This is just a base to drop my other colours into. I'm thinking it's autumnal or winter. Just want to suggest some of the colours from that time of the year. Right the way through. Oops, just picked the wrong colour there. Took a little bit of burnt sienna with that, but it doesn't matter. It fits. Okay. Now I can go in with some of my other colours. And I just want to suggest some bits of trees maybe up here. Something like that. Bit of glow, bit of direction. Take this up a little bit here to the edge so that we get a nice sharp edge there. Over here. What else can we put in here? Something autumnal, a little bit of brown. Just put that in there. That puts me them walking down here on some kind of surface as well. Um, yeah, just okay. Now I'm going to go in with my toothbrush and do some spattering. So. Some burnt sienna, and I just want to spatter in here. There we go. If the colour's too weak, it just melts into the surface, so we need a little bit of colour in here. Just get the direction going from left to right here up into our umbrella. Create a bit of direction. Bit of raw there. And let's just get a bit of spatter in here as well. So back to my burnt sienna. And I'm making this about a single cream consistency. And I just want to tap this in. Let's have some a suggestion of some leaf blowing around here. On this windy day. Some of this colour to the bottom here. Take that through the picture. Uh, I'm just going to make a little bit of kind of shadow colour a little bit. So I'll just purpley grey. Just put that in there. Again, it's going to put some in here. Hi, 
I think that looks a little bit like she's been blown around a little bit, doesn't it? A bit more of that ross yellow that I started with there, just to put the colour back through here. tapping on and letting the paint just melt into the surface. Create the suggestion of a big old tree here or something. And then it's time for my salt. Just a little bit of salt just to create some little starbursts in here. Don't go too mad. What happens with the salt is it picks up the colour out of the paper sucks it up into the salt granule and then as the paper dries the granule salt slowly releases a little bit of colour back in and forces a little back run giving little starburst effects and it's good for making it look like rain and that kind of thing um, just I want to add a little more depth to this top right hand side. I'm going to make my green a little bit dark up here. Just add a little bit of blue in there to my green and just create a little bit more. When you drop your colours in, they all just melt into each other. Unlike when you're painting and putting your brush down, where they can uh, create problems in mixing. They don't really mix, they just merge in this, this method. And it's fun to do. And it always ends up different. You never get the same picture twice. It's a little stronger colour going in there to emphasise it tree or something in that that area okay then I'm gonna let that dry and see what we have when it's dry okay so I'm letting that dry off a little bit more before I do anything up there but I think we're dry enough to work within our little figure here um, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the masking fluid off that I have around the edge because I don't want to have a hard white line around the edge of my figure. So I'm just going to do that now. Okay, so I've taken the masking fluid off around the edge of the figure here just so that when I paint her in, I don't have um, an outline around, around the back um, down here. Um, but I have left little bits of mask within the coat itself because these are helping to define the weather and the rain and the pleats in our coats and things. So just going to start and fill this in um, very simply. I'm just going to tease a bit of colour into her coat. Using my brush to describe shape in the direction that the coat's blowing in. You leave little gaps of white here and there that will help to describe what's happening with the, the coat. Little bits of mask still on there, but that's fine. A little bit more intense colour there, and I'm just going to go in, create a little bit of shadow in parts, bring a little bit more colour. I 
can see I've left some uh, mask on there, so I'll pay for that later. There we are, just to help describe a little bit of the, the shape. On the coat there. Going away. And maybe it's a little bit darker here in the lining. The coat's blown up. Maybe get a little bit of dark in there. Okay. And then her trousers. We'll just continue to paint this little figure. You can choose your colours, whatever colour outfit you want her to wear. It's all part of the fun of creating your own. Let me just change my mind on what I've just done there. Again, just little directional brush jokes to help describe some of the shapes in these trousers. Yeah. I maybe should have been a bit more patient and allowed that to dry off a little bit. Do be careful. Don't do what I do. Ha ha. And uh, we'll fix that up when it's dry. Okay, so red hat maybe. Let's have her a red hat. I've got her a little kind of flower thing on the front of her hat there. Um, just because I have with one of mine, I thought I'd give her one too. And a scarf. Rain a little bit at the edge there, that scarf. And I've just put a little bit of stronger red where I want it to be a bit darker, where they wrap around each other, maybe. a bit of free on the end there. There we are, my scarf. Maybe just put a bit more colour in her head. Get a bit of depth there. And I'll try and close in that line too. Just soften that a little bit with my damp brush. Right. 
so I'll let that dry off a little bit and then I'll come back. Okay, I've left it to dry off just a little bit and um, I've just added a little bit of colour to her shoes and uh, a little bit of skin tone to her face, just a tiny little bit. A little bit of um, yellow ochre or raw sienna and a little bit of one of your reds, lots of water and uh, just a little bit of skin colour there and a little suggestion of some, some hair um, but I've got masking fluid still on so I can't get all of the colour in and I need to leave it dry properly when you put salt on your picture it takes such a long time to dry so um, it may seem touch dry but it actually stays wet through for a little while so I may have to be just a little bit patient there. I'm going to put some colour in the umbrella and uh, let's have a red umbrella to match her hat and scarf because she's that kind of girl. So just a little bit of colour here into the bright painted in sections. Again just leave little bits of white paper here and there to give you a little bit of suggestion of shape so again I'm describing the brolly umbrella as being flipped up and just Do have a little bit of mask on those spokes there so should be all right paint over those so using the directional brush marks to describe what's happening in your picture stronger colour in the base there maybe. Oops, must extend that umbrella a little bit, seeing how I've gone over the edges. is still actually a little bit wet here it's bleeding out so getting a little bit of a run there which is unfortunate maybe I can just stop that going any further by just sticking a little bit of tissue on the paper there just to um, take out the moisture there just pressing on not mopping or dabbing, just pressing on. And it'll just take any moisture out of the paper. And I'll let that dry off and then uh, add some more shadow once it dries off. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of the masking fluid off in places where I can. Um, the paper is still fairly damp where I've got those heavy washes on. Um, but I have managed to take some of it off. I just wanted to show you how I add a little bit more depth to the shadowy areas and the coat and things like that. So working wet onto dry this time, but using the same colour. Remember when you're working wet onto dry you can use your paint a little bit thinner. Um, and just thinking about where you get more depth in colour um, underneath the armpits and Round the back things like that. Just add a little bit more paint. Just sweep it round. Keep a little bit of 
highlighted fabric on the front of a coat there. Rinse your brush out, dab it on a cloth and just soften off any hard edges that you don't want. When you're working with this kind of picture you might want one or two hard edges to help describe the shape of the coat, the fabric. Sleeves are round so I'm painting them to describe that. Okay. The jeans here. Um, I make myself up a purple sort of shade. Blue purple, of course, not pink purple. We want to shadow things down so I can add a little bit of shadow into the back of the trousers here. A bit more depth there. And leave little bits of the under colour coming through, but just strengthening it up. Um, some buttons on a coat, maybe. I've already put a little bit of shadow in the scarf area there just to, again, shape that up a little bit to see what's coming from behind and what's going underneath. And the umbrella. Put some shadow under here. laying your colour over the top of what you already have. Soften that off a bit. Okay, um, the little dog I've painted in, just a little black silhouette really. Let's put in the harness on. Seems to be the trendy way to walk dogs these days, the harness. If I put the harnesses on mine they might tow me over. And the dog lead. Yeah. Let's have her wearing gloves. So we've got her holding on to this umbrella here. For dear life. You don't need to paint all the fingers and things, just the suggestion of her hands there. I 
I've still got my skin fluid in here. And I'm not going to get it off anytime soon, so I need to just take where I can and then go walk my dogs and come back to it. Right, I'm going to leave it there for now and come back to it when I can get the masking fluid off. Right, so I've taken all the masking fluid off eventually after this painting had dried. Um, when you put salt on a pa painting, it takes so much longer to dry. Um, I'm working on a, a block here as well, which I think takes even longer because it uh, it's layers of paper underneath. But never mind, it did eventually dry and I've got the masking fluid off. So what we need to do now is just go back in and, and fill in any areas that we feel were overmasked. Um, possibly like the back of the trousers here that could do with a bit of colour putting back in. Um, <coughs> excuse me, maybe a little bit of definition on the edge of the scarf, but uh, not too much to do, I don't think, without being too piggy. Um, it's not that kind of picture. So um, can maybe enhance the lady's face just a little bit, maybe a little bit more colour into that. Not make a too pink, so a bit red in the face after being um, chasing her umbrella around. Let me just, I'm going to take a bit more of that out after it's been a bit too heavy handed there. Um, I like, I say, those those trousers. We can just backfill with a bit of colour into those trousers. Just add some. Uh, paint in there like that and what else did I say perhaps just the edges of the scarf a little bit I don't think it's that important but we could maybe just flick in a bit of a fluffy end on a scarf there I think that's it really. I mean, you can pick around where you think best, but I don't really think I want to put an awful lot more onto this. I can fiddle around for forever. So I'm just going to leave it there. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a glaze over this top right hand corner a little bit. It's an area that went a little bit muddy when I put the salt and spatter on. Um, that happens sometimes when you're using reds and greens and browns and greens, it does go a bit muddy. But because it's a stormy day, I want to maybe darken that area a little bit. So what I've got here is I've got a um, glaze mixed up, which is a kind of purpley bluish colour. And I'm going to use a big brush. Uh, on dry paper and I'm just going to lay this across from this corner here and what I want to be doing is just laying it across the top of my painting I don't want to be disturbing any of the colour underneath so this is it's important that you get a big brush and do it without fiddling reduce any temptation to go back over where you've just been just bring it round like that, laying over the top, try and go back into where you left off um, before it dries because you don't want to have any join up lines if you can help it. Just going to bring that across a little bit underneath the umbrella here and then I'm going to soften it off into the picture because I don't want to go all the way across into the picture. So what I do is I just put a little bit of water on the brush and extend this glaze into the watery area. Big brush helps. Something with some sable hair in it helps because it holds more water. Just put a little bit more colour in there. And you shouldn't lose any of the um, colours that you have underneath here, all it's actually doing is putting a little bit of unification, there's a word for you, 
um, in your painting and joining it all together just a little bit. Have some shadow in here. Make a bit more for it to stand on, perhaps. Take that up just a little bit. You see that it's still wet, so I can drop a little bit of colour in. It is the sort of painting that you can sometimes get away with a few little backgrounds here and there because it's just that style of painting. But I'm trying not to do it too much. So I want to spring this round and then just fade it off. Just drag it out. Like so. Because I think it just gives a little bit more of a weather feel to the picture. And there we have it. I'm not going to do any more now. I think I've fiddled long enough. And uh, on with the next one. Have a bit of fun anyway. It is, it is a, a fun way of painting. And it just helps you to be able to explore and play with your paints a little bit. So.